Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of this animation series. I have uh, a new scene brought in and you see we have a crankshaft, we have a driver, we have a rod and finally a piston. And if I press 7 on my keyboard to go to the centers, I can select all my centers here. Sorry. And you see we have four centers now. And they are all on the exact same location. So this is what we have to do first. Putting the centers to where they need to be. OK, for this I go to Polygon mode and select the crankshaft and click on all these eyes here so we only have what we need. And this one is good. This one has the center at the proper position. So let's go to the driver. And last time I used a locator here. And this is the other version. You can put it in its own mesh and then you can use a center, which I think looks uh, tidier. So select these two polygons, go to work plane, align, work plane to position, press 7 on the keyboard, select the center and go to setup to work plane position. And this one is good. Here on the rod, we need to have the center also exactly here. So do the same. Work plane align to selection, 7. You know the drill by now, to work plane position. Finally, the piston. This one is not critical, so I can just select this part here, align work plane to selection, 7, select the center and set to work plane position. Good. Now we can go to items mode and start with the animation and rigging. First thing to animate is the crankshaft. So, uh, if I look at it in the right view and go to the properties and make sure that I have reset the work plane. No, I didn't. A key. Now select the crankshaft and if I rotate it Uh, that's from the previous time when I did it, so this is probably still running. Yes, okay. S but anyway, I have a key on frame 0 and another one with 360 on frame 40. And in the graph editor, I have set the behaviors from post and pre to linear. And this is how it rotates around infinitely if we let it. Anyway, next we need to bring in uh, the driver and the driver must be parented to the crankshaft and it must be visible and now we can run this like so. By the way, this is the other method. Last time we used the locator here and this time the driver is its, in its own mesh and has its own center. So, now we have a similar problem as we had in the first part, namely uh, the crankshaft is a circular motion and the rod 
must follow on this end, but on the other end it must be a horizontal movement. So let's do exactly the same as we did the first time, namely use this intersect line, linear curve, and the linear curve means it is a curve with only two vertices. So I press N for a new mesh, call it curve, and press F2, bring out the curve tool and make a curve from here to here. This must be zero and this must be zero as well. F2 again. Now I can select this curve in polygon mode, go to the top view and bring it to the proper position. W key to about here. Yes, good. Drop the tool, go back to item, which means press 5 on the keyboard, perspective, and now we can do the same as before, namely we can select the driver and then control select the curve mesh, click on intersect line and now it has created a new locator for us, this one, and we can see that it follows exactly the driver or the center of the driver as it did on the first video, but this does not help. So uh, there is something else except the locator we also got a little plus here in front of the driver and we got an intersect. And all these intersects have a length modifier and I know how long it has to be, namely 1.5 meters. And now our locator is 1.5 meters away from the center and it will always maintain this distance no matter the motion. So this looks very good and we are on our way. So we can bring in the rod and the rod, as you might guess, is exactly 1.5 meter. So I renamed this locator to rod lock and then move the rod or parent the mod to rod to this locator. We have another hierarchy now here as we have up with the crankshaft and all the children, there could be many, will inherit position, rotation and scale from the parent. So let's see what we have done. Well, we're almost there, but a little thing is missing. This end should be up here. And to do this, I select this locator, still in items mode. I select the driver here, or if it doesn't go well, the driver mesh. And then add a direction constraint and poof, now we're there. That is good. So the only thing left is the piston. So I bring in the piston like so and select the piston, then select this locator and add a position constraint. And what Modo did now, it has positioned both of these centers on top of each other and we can find out ourselves what uh, offsets we need, minus one meter for example, and then eyeball this, it works, but let's undo this, I show you another way. Before I press the position, 
constraint, I click on compensation here. Compensation tells Modo that Modo should figure out how big the offsets should be. If I click on position now, you see nothing happens to the piston. And if we go and have a look, you see Modo has very, very precisely calculated the offsets we need. So now our animation is finished. It works. If we want to know if it fits to uh, the render camera, we can go to the render camera view. And if we are happy with uh, this, then we can go and render it out. I showed how to do this in the first video. I will not do it again. So that's it for part two. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Take care and have fun modeling with Modo. See you soon. Bye bye.